Okay, this one hurts a little bit, printing out uh, dumbbells the last couple of days. Welcome back, folks. In today's video, I have my biggest shipment to Amazon yet, and we were gonna go international to Australia, so we go through the entire packing process, getting all of our labels printed out, packing our products up, getting everything put into the bags. We even put it into the box, then we get to the shipping part. Let's just jump right into it. I've spent the last week doing nothing really but printing dumbbells, sander holders, and assembling dumbbells. And if you remember from our last shipment to Amazon, we sent 20 of these, and then the one prior to that we sent 12. Well, 12 of them have been ordered, so I need to get more of them on their way. I did that, not bamboo. So I'm not exactly sure of the count, how many dumbbells that I have right now, but I do know that I have enough to make about this many more. And the bubble bags that I send all of the products out in really should have uh, risk labels on them, letting people know that they're not for children and stuff like that. Amazon does require that. So I went ahead and printed out a bunch of those last night and got them applied to the bags. So they're all prepped and ready to go. So essentially I just put it in this little cellophane bag. I'll fold it in half. One side will have a choking hazard warning on it, and the other side is a risk of suffocation. I'm only sending 25 of the dumbbell holders to Amazon Australia, and that is because I am not a professional seller in Australia yet. I want to see how the market goes, so I do not want to you know, start paying that $40 per month until I know things are gonna sell over there. When I started listing my products on Amazon, I listed all of them under a generic name. What I didn't realize is that I wouldn't be able to go back afterwards and change that if I decided to register as a brand in Amazon. You can either have a brand registry in a trademarked brand name like the Mountain Maker or Samcraft, Hi, Sam. Or you can do what I did and go the brand approval process. And to do that, every single one of your items or the packaging or both has to have your brand name on it. So in my case, the Mountain Maker. So this is not sufficient enough to go to Amazon and be sold under my brand name. So what I did is I went over to the Falcon 2 Pro, dialed in the settings a little bit to get a, well, a good looking engraving that's not too noticeable, that's not too deep just enough to have our brand name permanently affixed to the product. Right off of the laser, they've got our name engraved on the back of it. Every single one of them is like that. Some of them don't have the fourth screw hole here. The newer ones that I'm printing out do not include that to leave better space for this. And I found that you just don't really need four screws. This one, this one, and this one are sufficient enough. So the way this bag is gonna look is like this. It's got one of these inside of it. It's got three mounting screws. And essentially all I do is take the bag, set it in there upside down, and then it's basically ready to go just like it normally would be. I think it's one of our Australian FBA labels, which are essentially the same as the American FBA labels, they just have a different skew on them. Then they go like this into the box that we started our dumbbells in. I've got 15 of these to do, so let's get to it. I've got plenty of room left in this box after loading up our 15 sander holders for the Festool and the dumbbells. I wanna get some of the Milwaukee sander mounts sent out now. I don't have very many of them on hand, but for now I'm gonna print out labels for the ones that I do have. And then whatever room is left in here afterwards, we'll fill the rest with dumbbells. Munbin, the thermal printer company, reached out to me a few weeks ago and asked if I'd be interested in trying out their printer. Doing Amazon means that I'm printing FBA labels and shipping labels. So I'm constantly switching out the thermal labels, which is time consuming and I don't want to do it anymore. Using the Munbin printer, I quickly designed up something in Canva. 
There's our logo on it, designed for Milwaukee, M18, and such. Because this is going to Australia, we have to measure the box in centimeters. And that's where one of these guys comes in handy. This is a imperial and metric tape measure. So the bottom here is millimeters, centimeters, and the top is inches. Okay, so we've got 2.4, we'll call it two and a half ounces for the Festools, two ounces for the Milwaukee's, and two and a half for the dumbbells. So we can do some quick math here. We know two and a half, so we're just gonna round up and say that the box is probably around three quarters of a pound and call it nine pounds. And then I'll go, hey Siri, what's nine pounds in kilos? 4.08 kilograms. So we'll put it in the computer as four kilos. Looking at 46 centimeters for our length, 36 centimeters for our width, and then we'll just call it 27 centimeters for the height. 46 by 36 by 27. All right, this is my first time doing a shipment outside of the United States. So I'm curious to see just how much it's gonna cost. Okay, so it gave us our FBA label, and now it wants us to enter tracking information. So for this, I'm gonna try pirate ship. Okay, this one hurts a little bit. So I don't really think that's a very feasible number. If you take $137.90 and you break it down between 55 items, that's way too much money to be spending per item, especially after Amazon takes their cut. If I was just sending that out myself, that would be fine. But Amazon is gonna take 15% of the total cost of the product, and then they have other fees associated with that for FBA. It's just not worth it, I don't think, to send products to Australia at $137 for 55 items. I did a little bit of adjustment on that box, and just going up one inch in any direction jumped it from $137 to $155. So it's not even like adding more product into the box and doing less shipments would cover that extra cost. It just brings the price of the shipment up. So I think it's probably best to leave that to Etsy. They do it really well. They have all the customs information that you can pre-fill out. So it's, you know, an easy, straightforward process. So next up on my agenda for today is taking all of that stuff out of the Australian box once again and repurposing it with American FBA labels. I have to put all of these little cards inside of there because uh, I didn't do that originally for the Australian side. I didn't really think of it until I got to the American side. So you'll see the process of getting these all prepped here in just a second, but that means we have 55 more items that we can send to our American store or put into stock here for sales on Etsy and Shopify. Let's just jump right into that. Okay, I've got 35 dumbbells packed up in here. Before I do any of the sander mounts though, I want to include just a little bit of a card inside of there. It's probably pointless, but since these are something that I kind of worked on, figured I'd just include a little card for each of the different styles. So I've got the Milwaukee ones, the Makita and the Bosch, and then the Festool. And I just printed this out on a light, light duty cardstock paper. And I'm just using this little, it was like $12.99 I think on Amazon. You can cut like five of these at a time, maybe even more, but we're just gonna see how it does with five. Yeah, just a simple little card. It'll go inside of the bag when they open it up so they know it's a fit for their tool. I also went ahead and pre-labeled all of these bags too, just so it makes it a little bit easier. So now we've got our card, our bag, our bubble bag, and our product. So let's see how these go together. Stick that in there, and into the bag. One of these labels on the outside. Right there. We've got our risk, our little design for the Festival Sander made in the USA. I've changed the size of the FBA label to like 80 by 50 or something. And what it does is it makes it so you can fit the entire title of the product on there so there's no confusion. It makes it a little smaller, but when it comes to the sander mounts, they would all look the same. They all start and end the same, so you wouldn't be able to differentiate between the two of them. With that said, last step is getting our FBA label on. 
I'm gonna get the rest of these packed up, included into our box with the dumbbells, and however many we can fit in there is what we're gonna send. All right, I don't know how I did it, but we've got 20 of the Milwaukee sander holders in here. Underneath that, I've got dumbbells. There's 35 of those. And then underneath here, I've got 15 of the Festool ones. It is a tight fit, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm just gonna take everything out of the Australian box. I'm gonna take all of the FBA labels off, every one of the sander holders, and then reapply new FBA labels to all of them. I also put one of those cards inside each of the sander holders as well. Well, that only filled up about half of the box, so I'm gonna spend the next couple of days packaging up more items. I'm also waiting on some screws to arrive from Amazon and more filament to arrive from Bamboo. So that is where this one is gonna wrap up. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you enjoy this type of content. And if you wanna see more like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you never miss out on the next upload. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I hope you have a great and successful week. I'll see you next time.